world as we know it. The first way we know it's the end of the world as we know it is that within the last two years, Coke and Pete, uh, Procter & Gamble have both come out and said, we don't care about impressions anymore. So as much as, yes, it has been the, the sort of universal language, um, Coke has said we care about customer expressions. Procter & Gamble has said we call it care about customer engagement. Now, neither one of them bothered to really get very specific about <laughs> right. what engagement or impressions mean, but, um, but essentially they've said we don't care about impressions anymore, and oh, by the way, we're not going to pay for them, <laughs> which is going to severely impact how everybody does things. Um, Ford got 10,000 advanced orders through social media. Didn't do any PR, no advertising, no nothing. Basically gave it out to a bunch of bloggers said, what do you think? Not only did they get the advance <laughs> orders, uh, but they also got specific recommendations uh, for improvements that they made before they launched the product. What's that worth? Never mind the advance orders, but what's the advance, what's the advantage of having customers tell you what they want in a car that you can fix before it actually gets launched? Exxon spent 25 years trying to find a solution to how you clean up oil. They gave up. They crowdsourced it. They put it out on blogs and on Twitter and said, guys, can you help us? Within a week, they had an answer, right? They put a little little incentive out there, win a free trip to Alaska. Cost them $5,000, right? And in a week, they had the answer. So think about the ROI of, I did this, I paid somebody to put a tweet up, oh, 140 characters times $100 an hour, right? I mean, say it was 100 bucks, right? How much oil do they, can they recover at $100 a barrel for recovered oil? Just think about that a lot. Um, Organic is an agency in New York who basically said, you know, there's got to be an answer to this predictive thing. We have enough data, right? We all want to be able to say, if I do this, will I get that? So they put together a very complex model um, for a, a truck launch using a lot of data to SaaS collapse. And SAS is a, a data analytics company like Oracle and SAP and stuff. And they put it all together and they said, well, if we get this much engagement out there and this much participation in this conversation, will we get, I don't know, 10,000 you know, test drives or whatever? Well, they, they figured it out. They figured out the math. They then said, will it work for tampons? They did it again. And yes, some of it was paid. But the point was, they were able to accurately predict. They said, if we go out and we, we sample and test and do PR around this tampon introduction, we, accurate, we can predict that we're going to do this many actual trials. And sure enough, they did it. So people are now accurately doing predictive analysis based on data that is currently available. Um, how many people followed Andy Carvin and the, uh, the whole thing? I mean, this is so important outside of the United States, which is Andy Carvin, a, an NPR geek, basically. He's a computer guy that was, was their social media guy. In his office in Washington, D.C., right, had the news of Mubarak stepping down an hour before Al Jazeera, three hours before CNN, okay? What did it cost him? What did it cost NPR to break that story three hours early? CNN spent God knows what to have 50 journalists in Egypt. Andy Carvin's sitting in his office. He has good connections through his social media connections. He's curating the tweets. He understands the sources. He knows who these people are. Yes, did it take him some time to get to those sources and understand that? Yes, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper than having 50 people on site in Egypt. Um, Dave Carroll, everybody watch United Breaks Guitars? Okay. So the, the missing piece of this is the fact that everybody knows that, yes, you know, 100 million people watch the video. And a lot of people know, if you've heard Andy, uh, Dave, Car Dave Carroll speak, that, that United's analysts and everybody else admitted that they lost $180 million in brand value, which was essentially they could have replaced his guitar 51,000 times. But the more interesting thing is, he didn't go out to Taylor Guitars. He didn't do anything special with Taylor Guitars. But Taylor Guitars, in a recession, saw a 25% sales increase, thanks to Dave Carroll. Think about that one. Sodexo said, oh, you know what? We need to hire some people. There are a bunch of people talking about food on Twitter. Let's go out and talk to them, see whether we can recruit some people. They were so successful, they put five people on Twitter, which granted cost them you know, some money. 
but they were able to cancel their entire $350,000 monster ad budget. Net ROI from social media participation, $300,000. Think about that. Humane Society said, oh, well, let's play around with Flickr and do a little test and see whether we can bring in any money. And oh, by the way, you know, let's make people donate a dollar. And basically, Humane Society and ASBCA and all, how many people here work for nonprofits? Okay. How much do anybody know what an, what a member is worth to your organization? What a, what the value of somebody is to your organization? Do you know? Somebody in your organization knows. It's not hard to figure out. You look at the total number of members and the total amount of donations, and somebody in the in the statistical analysis world can figure that stuff out for you. So they know that every time they capture ASPCA knows that every time they capture a name, that name if that name turns into a donor. That's worth $65,000 over the lifetime of that donor, right? So Humane Society wasn't even thinking that. They just thought, well, we're going to test the effectiveness of Flickr. They generated $650,000 in six weeks. Okay, that's 650,000 new registered members that they can go back and ask for. That was simply a, you know, a PR person saying, let's try some Flickr stuff. Um, CEO of a hospital in Boston won a huge union battle via blogging. He started a blog called Running a Hospital. He said, any of these people here in the healthcare business, healthcare world, do you know the story about Paul Levy? So Paul Levy decides to start a blog to change the face of healthcare in Boston. Talked about how his hospital and all hospitals kill people. And they do wrong side surgery and they make all these mistakes and you've got to fix it. And then he told his PR department, his legal department, he was starting a blog. <laughs> um, the net result was, not only did he, when he posted, he said, I gotta lay off 2,000 people, what am I gonna do? He got so many great responses and so many good ideas, he only had to lay off 200 people. Then he had this big battle with the unions. He just posted what he thought every single day. The Boston Globe doesn't have to go through the legal department and the, the PR department and everybody else to get an answer. They just read his blog. Guess what? The union wasn't doing that. Where did they get the, where did the, where did the, the hassled PR, I mean, the hassled Boston Herald and Boston Globe reporters go for news? They went to his blog. They knew that that was the best source of information. That's where they go for information these days. So, the 